one day, just one day, where my hair doesn't go down my fucking throat. Oh, forgot there was a pothole there. I always forget about that pothole. Yeah. I love when I turn sharp turns and you can just see my hair go, no. Gravity bitches. Hey guys, it's your broke beauty queen coming at you from my car. Sorry I sound like shit. I've been sick, but you know, this this thing happened today and I just wanted to kind of get it out of the way while it was still fresh on my mind, you know? Because I know that tomorrow I'm gonna be like, oh, I should have vlogged about that while I remembered it properly, but no. So, but I'm on my way to rehearsal for In the Heights, and, and no, I'm not gonna sing at rehearsal tonight because this is what happens when I sing. In the Heights, I flip the lights and start my day. There are five. <laughs> we are powerless. We are powerless. Powerless. <laughs> I feel great, it's just that I have um, some congestion left over and my voice just sounds like shit, so I am not going to be singing at tonight's brush up. Anyways, this happened this morning, so I thought I should just let you guys know. For those of you who don't know, my boyfriend and I live together in my house at my mom's because housing is fucking expensive and the apartment that he and I lived in before we moved back with my mom was just... It just gave us both anxiety and neither of us could stay there anymore, so we, we moved back with my mom. We have a long commute in order to get where our lives are, and sometimes my boyfriend will open in the mornings, and he has to, he has to be at work by 9.30. It takes about an hour to an hour and a half in order to drive from our place in the middle of bumfuck nowhere in order to get into the city where he worked. I sound like Estelle. Do you guys remember Estelle from Friends? It was uh, Joey's agent. Joey, have you ever seen me ecstatic? Well, here it is. Okay, so it takes about an hour to an hour and a half, depending on traffic, to get from our place in the middle of bumfuck nowhere in order to get to where we work and where our lives are, basically, because the college is less than a mile away from the mall where he works. He left this morning, he woke up around 6, I heard him get up and he kind of got ready and I was on NyQuil last night so it took a lot to wake me up. I'm a light sleeper. This morning since I was on NyQuil, all I remember was him kissing me on the cheek and saying, okay, bye honey, and I was like, alright, I love you. So he left around 8, around 8.30ish, I got a call from him and he was panicking. He was like, honey, I got into a car accident, like, oh my god, are you okay? And he, He's like, no, I'm fine, and the car isn't that badly damaged. It just got hit from behind, and so it only hit, like, one side of the car, and it's still drivable, but the cops have been called. I have no issues with cops. It's cops that have issues with me. My luck and my mom's luck, cops just don't like us for some reason. I thought we were cool. I thought we were pretty cool to get along with, but no. I want to like cops, but... One almost arrested me because I was napping on the side of the road in my car. Anyway, that's another story. I will get into that. So, I'm like, the cops have been called? He's like, yeah, the cops are on their way. And I was like, okay, you have really bad luck with cops. Just like, I have really bad luck with cops. Get out of there before the cops come. And he was like, no, someone's injured. I'm like, what do you mean? Go and make sure that they're okay. And I hear him shouting are you okay? And I'm just like, you, you know you can just approach them, right? Little did I know the situation we were about to go into. Like the line ends up going dead because he's in a really shitty service area. As when I got there, I only had one bar and I usually have full bars where I live. As soon as I hear, no, someone fell into the ravine, I'm like, At this point, I'm already in my mom's room, and I'm like waking her up and telling her all of this. And then I'm just like, "We're going, let's go." So then we go out there, and like the, the traffic has kind of stopped for this, and they're letting people go. They got this cop out there, like a fucking crossing guard in, in a school crosswalk, and he's like stopping and letting people pass, and then he's like <laughs> letting other people pass on the other side of the road. And at this point, an ambulance is pulling away with its lights on. I'm just like, oh shit, shit, where is the Prius, where is the Prius? And, because I'm automatically thinking, where there's the Prius, there's the boyfriend. Like, that's my thought process right there. And so, finally I see him, and it's like, 
you know those little like curve out things on the sides of the road where it's like you can pull over when you're driving alongside a hill area so there's one of those and then like a thousand feet up is another is another pullover area I don't know what they're called and so the Prius is in the second one the farther one up and then so when we get there there's like two fire trucks a tow truck an ambulance and like four cop cars all of their lights flashing and I'm just holy shit holy shit my first thought was Christian's gonna have to be deported because you know obviously he killed somebody like, uh, that was my thought. Like, I was freaking out. Then I see uh, this green van had its entire front smashed. The entire front bumper was smashed. It, like, hit something head on. But my boyfriend said that the Prius was only hit on the passenger side back brake light. And I was just like, how, how did they get that unless they were just in an accident before? Like, I'm confused. I was so confused. So I'm gonna put up this diagram for you guys. This girl in a powder blue Prius suddenly decides to break and swerve into the dugout. That's what it's called, a dugout, yes. So here's the order. The Prius, the blue Prius, a silver car that Christian said he couldn't get the like brand or whatever. The white Prius that my boyfriend is driving and then a green minivan. Blue Prius decides to break and cut across into the dugout. Her excuse was, I wanted to get some waters from the back of my car. Bitch, you could have waited. Then, the silver car, he brakes and swerves a little bit to the left, and he then speeds up and swerves around. He tried to do the same thing by swerving around the blue Prius like the silver car had, but the silver car braked, giving Christian no time I mean, to get out of the way, and the green minivan came in from behind him and hit the back right hand side of the car. So even if this guy is slamming on the brakes at 60 miles an hour, he's still going pretty fast and downhill. So he can't stop in time. He hits the back corner of Christian's Prius and then ends up bouncing off like it's fucking 90s ping pong on Nintendo and then ramming into the blue Prius and knocked her into the ravine. Christian pulls over, obviously. The silver car pulls over and looks at Christian and says, why the fuck did the blue Prius stop? And he's just like, I don't know, I don't know. And the silver car just leaves. He left. You need to make sure that everyone is okay and you need to make your statement to the police before you can go anywhere. Stop and say like, yo, I'm sorry, this is what happened. You still stop. You never hit and run. That is an assholey thing to do. Never hit and run. The silver car left. So now we're left with cars one, three, and four. Number one is in a ravine. Number four pulled over into he pulled over into the dugout. Car number three, Christian, pulled over into the second dugout because he was kind of trying to get out of the way. I don't know who called the police. Christian's freaking out because he thinks he hurt someone. He thinks that someone is really hurt, even though none of this was his fault. Blue Prius bitch climbs up the hill to get to him and blames everything on him. Blames everything on him. And I was just like, he, he wasn't the one who swerved. He wasn't the one who braked. He was trying to get out of the bad situation and you are the one who caused everything. Like what the fuck? She goes off on him and is blaming him for everything. Me, I'm defensive of my boyfriend. If I had heard any of this, oh, that bitch would have been praying to God. Like I said, by the time I got there, someone was already being taken away in the ambulance. And from what I hear, no one has been severely hurt. No, there was no severe damage to any people. The green minivan got towed and by the time the cops came up and they, they got everyone's statement and he just kind of said okay so this is your side of the story this is what they said this is what they said he said she's obviously in a bad mood she's yelling at you she's yelling at her insurance company she's yelling at everybody this is in no way your fault you guys can go home for christian he's like you know you're the nicest cop i've ever met thank you and so we all shook his hand and said thank you so much and then we were on our way 
I didn't get to see the tow truck attempt to lift this car out of the ravine, but that would have been fun to watch. I'm, I'm the kind of person who worships chaos, and I apologize, but it's so cool. Leave your opinions about it in the comments below because, like, I really am genuinely curious on how anyone could have blamed Christian for any part of that accident. Because he got hit. They were saying that he is the one who hit the blue Prius. The cop, my mom, Christian, and I all looked at the front of our Prius. There was no damage whatsoever. So I genuinely do not see how Christian is at fault. And that's not me being biased because I'm his girlfriend. If he were the one in the blue Prius, I would just be like, well, you fucked up. Thank you guys for watching. If you like me doing story time, just let me know. I like to tell stories, so I don't, I probably will do it anyway, because also this is kind of a video diary for me. So, so yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Till next time, be safe, smart, and something else. I'll see you guys later. Bye. So I don't know how I totally forgot to mention this, but I knew that Guy Fiari had moved into my town a little while ago. He, he hasn't been around for very long, but you know, I, I just hadn't seen him around because you know, it's a small town and usually you see everybody fucking around. But anyways, as we're on the side of the road talking to the police and I'm standing with Christian while he's giving a statement to the police, this bright yellow Ferrari comes up. I had not had my coffee. I look over and I'm just like, that's a nice car. And then I snap out of it and I go and pay attention to the cop. I didn't realize that Guy Fiari was in just like, hey guys, how's it going? I didn't realize that the guy who pulled up in a bright ass yellow Ferrari with a license plate that said broiled wasn't just a guy with a nice car. It was the Guy Fiari driving a Ferrari it was him with all of his frosted tip glory. It turns out that he owns a restaurant around here that I have yet to go to, so I'm gonna have to go up and say, dude, I love your car. <laughs> I know everyone's gonna be like, why don't you comment on the Food Network? Why don't you comment on his show? Why don't you comment on his restaurant? Why don't you comment on his food? Well, like, yeah, my dad's a chef, so I do have some food knowledge and I, we do have like food in common but who doesn't have food in common one thing i do know that guy fiari and i will have in common is that we both like his car i will comment on his food after i have eaten it i have yet to have guy fiari's food no i know i will like guy's food it's just i want him to know how much i love his car oh <laughs> i'm driving on a mountain the ears won't pop because if I had known that the guy in a yellow Ferrari was Guy Ferrari, or Fieri, or... I am like so uncertain of how to pronounce his last name now because of Ferrari. Fieri? Guy Ferrari? Guy Fieri? Fieri. Guy Fieri. That doesn't sound right either. If I had known that it was him showing up in all of his frosted tip glory, then I would have shouted out, yo guy, I like your car. I know. I was so tired that all I saw was bright yellow shiny, it's nice. That is my thought process before coffee. So I went from, ooh, shiny but broken. Ooh, shiny and in a ditch. Ooh, shiny badge. Must talk to man with badge. Badge important. Shiny Ferrari. Very shiny Ferrari. Pretty Ferrari. Very yellow, shiny Ferrari. Back to shiny badge. Shiny badge important. I didn't know Ferrari important. So that's the moral of the story. You better have coffee if you're calling me for an emergency because who knows, I'm a, I might miss out on calling out, yo guy, I like your Ferrari. I don't know. I actually don't know what the moral of the story is. Just be safe. I don't know. Be safe, smart, and something else. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.